Welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show, everyone. This is your host, Austin and Fabio. And today we're going to be doing things a little differently as to what we're looking at. This is the first of its kind to show up on the show. It's a preliminary analysis on a mining company called BHP. Now, a little bit about BHP is what Austin's going to kind of tell us. But before that, I just kind of want to let everyone know that if you guys want or have any requests on preliminary analysis or deep dive analysis, please go to our website at capitalmindset.org, go to the submission place, and then enter your email Contact name, form. the yes. content list form, sorry, and <laughs> the email name, and as well as the business, you don't have to tell us your name, you can just write whatever you can, yeah. you know, keep it respectful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then tell us what company you'd like us to look into. We usually uh, write, uh, write an article and follow it with a video. Uh, we're still kind of trying to catch up on the articles, but we're getting there. We just have, you know, day jobs. <laughs> so <Yeah>. a lot <laughs> of things, <laughs> a lot of things. All right. So with that being said, Austin, um, I'm not going to say, what are we looking at here? Cause that's your catchphrase. So what say the heck are we looking at here? <laughs> nice. Mm. I like that. Well, basically, so what BHP is, is BHP is the number one mining company in the entire world. They're based out of Australia. And what kind of really actually piqued my interest to this company is their partnership that they have. It's a work partnership with the Australian government currently right now. And what that kind of allows for is it Hold allows on, for- is, yes. is this an Australian mining company? It is. It is actually an Australian mining company in case I did not say that. And so for those of you who might not know, Australia is an incredibly, incredibly resource rich continent. So they have a ton of iron, they have a ton of coal, they have a ton of natural gas, they have a ton of copper, all of these various sundry resources exist inside of Australia. Now, the beauty of BHP and the reason that they interested me was they're not only in Australia, they own a huge amount of the coal mines and iron mines, especially inside of Australia. But they also, they own in a joint venture, the largest copper mine in the world. And guess where that is, Fabio? Hmm. Australia. No, the largest copper mine in the entire world is actually in Chile, of all places. It's in South America. You're from Venezuela, you know. <laughs> so basically, what kind of also piqued my curiosity about this too was that they actually, if, if you look at the recent share price, the share price has kind of been going down. And the reason for that is kind of increased regulatory scrutiny. So the market is kind of looking on these companies un, in favorably right now, un, unfavorably right now. And so what they did was they divested a portion of their business in oil and gas, and they actually bought into the Janssen Basin inside of Canada. And so Fabio, as me and you were actually talking about earlier, the significance of the Janssen area in Canada, in Canada is actually the fact that it has a huge amount of potash. And what potash is used for is for fertilizer to cultivate crops. And so as the world's population continues to increase, Fabio, we would probably like, or we would actually see an increased demand for potash, which BHP is now going to be able to supply, as well as the fact that they're already mining for iron and they're already mining for copper. So any other questions for me, Fabio, before I keep droning on about commodities? Because you know how much I love them. Yes. Where can I get better tape? Double size. Um, <laughs> did it fall off again? <laughs> well, okay. So but you can get- Serious uh, note. Real questions about the business. Ignoring that. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So we're looking at the number one mining company in the world by mm -hmm. operational size. It's Australian company. Uh, have a lot of deals in Australia, have deals in Chile. Basically, what I'm seeing is global reach. Yes. Um, so now the significance of this too, Fabio, is the fact that they typically operate in first world countries that by and large respect contract and property law, which is a very, very good sign for us because that means that the national government in these places where the firm is operating will actually respect the business of these firms. And now there is actually precedence in Chilean law for the state to seize these specific mines, but that's not exactly a risk here. It's more so kind of a union risk within Chile itself, which is why in uh, the annual report from BHP, they've actually disclosed that Chile is actually a very high risk um, mine site. But basically, what I really actually like about this company, Fabio, is also just the fact, too, that since Australia is so iron 
rich because there's so much iron. If you guys remember from my earlier video on Tattooed Chef, usually when you're negotiating international uh, shipping contracts, there's really the contract rate, which typically tend to be fixed. And then there's also the spot rate. And the spot rate is in essence, the spot rate is where you can negotiate prices on the fly. So Fabio, kind of putting two and two together here, if Australia has a huge amount of iron within the country and iron is typically negotiated on the spot rate, what would that mean for this? So are you talking from an operational standpoint? So they, they control a large portion of the operations globally. So they presumably yeah, so contribute. Basically, basically the point that I'm, that I'm trying to make is that they're the ones setting the prices, which means mm -hmm. that BHP's costs will be lower when it comes to shipping these things or mining or et cetera, because Australia is the one who has the ability to set these prices because they're so commodity rich in iron. So also, while you were at the lake yesterday, which is all great, and I, I also love going to that lake too, I basically turned myself into a lawyer on Australian law. And what I found is that there is a significant precedence inside of Australia for actually to respecting contract and property law. And so I really actually like seeing that. And then also too, and actually you, you noted this to me that um, sometimes it can be sort of uh, a situation of a special dividend, but in this instance, it's a very, 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 very high dividend. And that also kind of appeals to me too, because I like stocks with high dividends. So always stocks with high dividends or is not there always, caveat? there's a little bit more, which is why this is a preliminary analysis, which is basically the reason why I'm excited for this. But since kind of a, uh, with um, what you were kind of saying there, now I kind of have to get a little bit into the risks with this business itself. And a lot of the risks kind of stem from regulatory scrutiny over, um, over pollution, environmental contamination, global warming, et cetera. And the market is sort of pessimistic on the future of these specific mining businesses, which is actually kind of priced into uh, BHP's price right now. And then the other thing too, is that there is actually a, um, a risk existent in China too, just because of some of the regional tensions between China and Australia right now, because BHP has such a high vested interest inside of the Australian government itself. Interesting. So yeah. what we're seeing here, the scale of this business offers some protection. We can consider that what you just said as a moat, mm -hmm. right? And, um, Versus their competitors, which I know uh, to note them is Rio Tinto and uh, Vale. Mm -hmm. Some and people then, call uh, it Vale for some reason. For, for Tescue vale. Metals, I believe, is the mm -hmm. other one. The big okay. four mining group. Yeah. Okay. And then how, um, compared to the other ones, is BHP, would you say it's the number one in size? Yes, it is the number one in size. Now, Rio Tinto actually is the number one in terms of gross output, but um, BHP is the number one in terms of size. Rio Tinto also has a vested interest inside of Australia as well, but they've kind of fallen into some um, uh, legal scrutiny lately because they destroyed an ancient Aborigine site inside of Australia. So mm. that's, um, that's kind of another potential pitfall, which actually... During our comprehensive due diligence of this particular company itself, Fabio, not only do I want to explore BHP, I kind of want to explore their competitors. I want to see what their competitors are doing. And then I want to see the way BHP is potentially hedging against what their competitors are doing. Because to be quite frankly honest with you, Fabio, I'm incredibly interested in this stock, if you couldn't tell by uh, my exuberance and telling you all about Australian law. So yeah, <laughs> we, we... <laughs> With with all the the talk about inflation, and I'm not going to get into whether or not there is or isn't, uh, because I know both. I, I kind of understand both arguments of deflation and inflation. But mm -hmm. um, with commodity businesses, we must we have to be careful about um, its inherent risks being a commodity. So, it, it, uh, you know, oil is oil is oil, as I always say. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what your oil necessarily is, because if that oil works just as well, then that oil is the same. There's no patent or anything like that. There's no patents on commodities. So uh, we have to be careful with what the competitors are doing, what the supplies are doing. So it's a lot of things to keep track of and commodities can be dangerous because of that. But that being said, uh, there's always room for investing in every sector. You just have to really understand what you're getting yourself into. Um, another thing I'd note or take note of is that we want to make sure or what we need to find out in the deep dive is 
Uh, what's the deal going on with these prices? Are they temporary? Are they not? Because going back to that first point about inflation, if these prices are not temporary or uh, they're, and they're more, they're going to stay. And then if not, they're going to uh, inflate a little bit more at maybe a lower level or maybe higher level that commodities do offer a great protection against that inflation. Because sometimes, not sometimes, but a lot of times these products are necessities. Necessities for infrastructure. Um, so like copper, we use copper everywhere uh, for everywhere. electricity. Wires, yeah, electricity. Li literally everything uses copper, which is also the reason too why I like to see with BHP, <clears throat> they own such a huge mine in Chile for copper because copper is such a vital resource. And what's interesting too, Fabio, I was kind of going through a little bit of the rounds of my preliminary analysis. And I noticed that the price of copper was kind of corresponding to the stock price of BHP. Now, I'm not saying that there's a correlation here, but I just found that kind of interesting. So during our deep dive, that's something I would want to check into more to see the way that the uh, commodities and the prices of these specific commodities and the markets for these commodities, how they're directly or potentially indirectly through governments affecting BHP and their competitors. So- Oh, absolutely. All right. So on that note, I think you're excited for that do, uh, deep dive that we're going to yes. do on BHP. Uh, if uh, <laughs> nobody could tell, I'm uh, very excited. <laughs> well, so. that laugh was like, you're going to kill me or something. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, Fabio. <laughs> All right. So with that being said, thanks guys for watching. Be sure to like and comment down below your thoughts on the video. And if you guys have any ideas about what you guys like to for us to talk about next, you can share it in the comments down below, or you can go to our website and submit uh, right there an idea. All right. Thanks guys. Have a good one.